Learning mathematics is very, very difficult to many people, second only to learning how to speak English. Do you have difficulty? Don't be embarrassed. It's a lot of people don't know what they're doing when they get up there and do their mathematics. We're going to introduce you today to Fort Bend Tutoring, honey. Personalized math tutoring is the solution. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring, and today we'll be talking about multiplying polynomials. Multiplying polynomials here. All right, so let's go ahead and start. We have problem number one, which is 2x times 3x to the fourth power. I prefer to multiply the coefficients first and then attack the variables. So that's what you'll see me do. In other words, I like to compartmentalize my process. I focus on the coefficients first, aka the numbers in front of the variables, and then I'll multiply those like bases together. All right, so starting out, I'm just looking at 2 times 3, which is 6, and then multiplying x, which is to the first power, by the way. So if you don't see an exponent on your variable, you may assume it's 1, all right? It's just x to the first power in this case. So x to the first power times x to the fourth power, you'll add those exponents together to receive a result that is x to the fifth power. And this is my answer. That's it. That's multiplying a monomial times a monomial. You start out by multiplying the coefficients first, and then for every like base that you have in the problem, aka the x variable that I have here, you add the exponents on those variables. That's right. So you add the exponents, multiply the coefficients, and done, ladies and gentlemen. That's problem number one. Got a box around it. Let's keep it up. Okay, let's check out our next problem. Here in problem number two, I have a monomial, meaning one term, times a binomial, meaning two terms. Terms are separated by plus or minus signs. So if I'm looking inside the parentheses here, the first term within the parentheses is 3x. The second term is negative 2y. That's right, that minus sign is a negative sign, so it stays with the term. So once again, the second term inside the parentheses is negative 2y. I'm gonna get my arrows popping, ladies and gentlemen, because I love the distributive property. That's right, I'm gonna multiply the negative 17x squared y times the 3x as well as the negative 2y. So let's see what that looks like. So starting out, I focus on the coefficients first, the numbers in front of the variables. Negative 17 times three is negative 51. Mm -hmm. Then, multiplying x squared times x, which is, once again, to the first power, I'm going to end up with x cubed. That's right. 2 plus 1 gives me x to the third power. Then, I'll bring down my variable y. I didn't have another y to multiply with that, but it stays with the term. And then, multiplying negative 17x squared y times negative 2y, negative 17 times negative 2 is positive 34. And then x squared will be coming straight down. It doesn't have another x to multiply with. So then I'll end up with y times y, which will give me y to the second power. Remember, we get the 2 here by adding 1 plus 1 on those exponents there. And notice that we don't have any like terms. Every time you finish distributing, you always look to see if you can combine like terms. In other words, add or subtract those terms that have the exact same variables with the exact same exponents on them. And we can't. So therefore, that's the answer. Done. Red box in it. That's it. Okay, that's problem number two. Let's keep it moving. Here in problem number three, we have a binomial times a binomial. So ladies and gentlemen, anytime you're multiplying two terms times two terms, you can either distribute each term in the first set of parentheses times everything in the second set of parentheses, or you can go ahead and say that you're using the FOIL method, meaning first, outer, inner, last, as far as the terms are concerned, you can multiply that out using the FOIL method. All right, me, I prefer to say that I'm distributing because it's easier to me. So here, I'm going to get my arrows popping. That's the first thing I do, all right? So I got my arrows popping, ladies and gentlemen. Arrows popping. 5x times 3x, that gives me 15x squared. I then have 5x times negative 4, which is negative 20x. Then multiplying 2 times 3x, that gives me 6x. And then finally, 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. After I distribute, remember, you always look to see if you can combine like terms. And in this problem, we do have like terms. The middle terms are like terms because they both have x to the first power. This negative 20x and this positive 6x can be combined. And that's exactly what we'll do. So I'll be bringing down this 15x squared, writing the answer in descending order of x, meaning that I'm starting with the highest exponent on my variable x and working my way down. 
Okay, so negative 20x and positive 6x, that leaves me with negative 14x. Remember, unlike sign subtract, and you always keep the sign of the largest digit. And my largest value is negative, so I have to have a negative result here. So then I'll be bringing down this negative 8 and done. That's it. That's it. Done and done. If you're looking for more problems like problem number three, please check out our multiplying binomials video. We'll have eight problems, all right, in addition to the one that you see here, to practice up on multiplying a binomial times a binomial. All right, let's keep it moving, shall we? Let's look at problem number four. In problem number four here, I have a binomial times a trinomial, meaning three terms. I have 5x squared as the first term in the second set of parentheses, and I have negative 9x, and then a positive 2. So I'll be multiplying two terms times three terms. Now, I will give you a little hint, ladies and gentlemen, and that is, anytime you're multiplying polynomials, you can expect, you can have an expectation of the end result as far as the number of terms that you'll end up with after multiplying. Notice that I have two terms times three terms, and what is two times three, ladies and gentlemen? That's right, it's six. So you'll end up with six terms when you finish multiplying. Now that doesn't mean your final answer will have six terms all the time, but after multiplying, you'll end up with six terms. Just like in the previous problem, we multiplied two terms times two terms, and before simplifying, we had four terms after multiplying, okay? So you can use that to keep track of your process, making sure that you have all the terms that you should when you finish multiplying. So let's check out problem number four here. I'm gonna get my arrows popping, yeah. I'm going to say that I'm multiplying x times each of the three terms here. And I'm going to circle this second term here because it's negative, and I want to remind myself that that second term is a negative value. And I'll get my arrows popping here as well. There you go. So I'll be starting out with x times 5x squared, which will be 5x cubed. Then x times negative 9x is negative 9x squared. Remember, you add the exponents, all right? So that 1 plus that 1 gives me x squared. Then I have x times 2, which is 2x. And then I'll be multiplying everything by negative 3. Negative 3 times 5x squared is going to give me negative 15x squared. Negative 3 times negative 9x is going to be a positive 27x. And finally, I have negative 3 times 2, which is negative 6. Now, remember, I said that since I was multiplying two terms times three terms, I should end up with six terms. Well, let's check it out. I'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 terms. Exactly. So everything is where it should be. And next, I'll look to see if I can combine any like terms, as well as writing my answer from the highest exponent on the variable x to the lowest one. So in other words, I'll be writing my answer in descending order of my variable x. So I start with the highest exponent, the term with the highest exponent, which is 5x cubed. Then I'll combine this negative 9x squared and this negative 15x squared to give me a result of negative 24x squared. Then I have my x to the first power terms. I have 2x and a positive 27x. This gives me a positive 29x. And then I'll just bring down that negative 6, and this is my final result. That's it. Done and done. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's problem number four. Mm -hmm. Let's keep it moving. In our next example, we have the quantity of 2x plus 3y plus z times x plus 4. So here we have a trinomial times a binomial this time. And you can distribute this problem out. In other words, taking every term in your first set of parentheses and multiplying it with everything in the second set of parentheses. However, I don't like the way this looks. So I'm going to rewrite it okay, as x plus 4 times 2x plus 3y plus z. I prefer to have the smaller amount of terms first than the larger. It's just a preference. So, like I said, you can go ahead and multiply the way it was, but I'm not going to do it that way. I don't like it that way. So, I'm not going to do it that way. So, what I will be doing is getting my arrows popping. So, I'm going to do that. There you go. I'm going to get my arrows popping around here. Okay, so arrows are popping. And now I'll be multiplying everything first by x. So, x times 2x is going to give me 2x squared. Then x times 3y is a positive 3xy. Then I have x times z, which is xz. All right. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, it's important when multiplying these polynomials to write your answers, write your products in alphabetical order as far as the variables are concerned. That helps you identify like terms. So keep that in mind. All right. So then I'm next going to be multiplying everything by 4. So 4 times 2x gives me a positive 8x. 4 times 3y is 12y. 
and 4 times z is going to be a positive 4z. All right. So after you distribute, you always look to see if you have any like terms. So looking at all my different terms here, none of the variables are identical from term to term. So that's it. I'm going to put a box around that. This is the answer. Can't do anything with that. Okay. So that's problem number five. Done and done, which is 2x squared plus 3xy plus xz plus 8x plus 12y plus 4z. Ladies and gentlemen, don't get too bogged down by the order the term should be in when you have multiple terms like this and it's all wick wacky. Yeah, don't worry about that. As long as you have all the terms together, you'll be fine. Okay? There it is. Next, we have problem number six. We have a trinomial times a trinomial, ladies and gentlemen. So that's the first for us today. So what I'll do is I'll get my arrows popping, showing that I'm going to be multiplying 3n squared times every term in the second set of parentheses. And then I'll be multiplying negative 7n times everything in the second set of parentheses. And finally, backing that up by multiplying everything by 1. So let's start off with our 3n squared term first. So 3n squared times n squared gives me 3n to the fourth power. Then, multiplying 3n squared times 2n, that gives me a positive 6n cubed. Next, I'll be multiplying 3n squared times negative 3, which is negative 9n squared. And next, I'll be multiplying everything by negative 7n. So here, negative 7n times n squared is negative 7n cubed. Negative 7n times positive 2n is negative 14n squared. And then negative 7n times negative 3 gives me a positive 21n. Mm -hmm. But there's more. I still have to multiply by 1, right? So here, multiplying by 1, I have 1 times n squared is a positive n squared. Multiplying 1 times 2n gives me a positive 2n. And then finally, 1 times negative 3 is always negative 3. So remember, I would said that if you started out and just multiply the number of terms times the number of terms, that'll tell you how many terms you should have when you finish multiplying. So 3 terms times 3 terms gives us 9 terms. So let's count and see if we have them all. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There it is. I have all nine terms present. So I want to rewrite this answer by simplifying and writing my answer in descending order of the variable n. That's right. n as in Nancy. I have as a first term 3n to the fourth power. Then I can combine my n to the third power term. So 6n cubed minus 7n cubed is a negative n cubed. Then I'm going to combine my n squared terms, and I have my n squared terms showing up right here in these three places. So I have negative 9 n squared, negative 14 n squared, and positive 1 n squared. So negative 9 and negative 14 gives me negative 23, and negative 23 plus 1 is negative 22. So this is going to be negative 22 n squared for the third term of my answer. The next thing I'll be combining is the n to the first power terms. So 21 n plus 2 n, that gives me a positive 23n, just like so. This last term, negative 3, doesn't have any like terms to go along with it, so you'll just bring it down, and that's going to be your answer. All right? So you'll have 3n to the fourth power minus n cubed plus 22n squared plus 23n minus 3 done and done. That was problem number 6, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Let's keep it moving, shall we? Okay. Next problem. We have the following. We have problem number 7, which is x times x plus 1 times x minus 2. So here we have three factors multiplying on one another, all right? So what we can do is we can start out by just simply multiplying x into our first set of parentheses. That's one strategy that you can use. An alternative is to multiply the binomials together. So it's up to you which way you want to do it, all right? So I'm going to start out this way by simply multiplying the x times x plus 1 x times x gives me x squared. x times 1 is going to be x, and that'll be the result of distributing that x within this first set of parentheses. Notice that everything is still multiplying on one another. That's why I went ahead and still used my parentheses to show that the result of x times x plus 1 will be multiplying on that x minus 2. From here, I have a binomial times a binomial. So I'm going to get my arrows 
popping once again on this second part of my process here. So x squared times x, that gives me x cubed. x squared times negative 2 is negative 2x squared. x times x is x squared. And finally, x times negative 2 gives me a negative 2x. Remember, anytime you finish distributing, you always look to see if you can combine like terms. And it turns out, I can. My middle terms are like terms right here. So I'll be bringing down this x cubed and then combining negative 2x squared with a positive x squared. That leaves me with a negative x squared. And then bringing down that negative 2x, <laughs> you got it. I'm done. Red boxing it. That's the answer, ladies and gentlemen. That's the result of x times x plus 1 times x minus 2. Remember that since we're multiplying, you can always use the commutative property of multiplication, meaning that it doesn't matter the order in which you multiply. As long as you end up multiplying everything in the end, you're good to go. That was problem number 7. Let's look at our last problem for the day. Okay, problem number 8, we have 2x squared y times x plus 2y times x minus y. Once again, I have three factors multiplying on one another, and this time, I'm going to show you what it looks like when I start out by multiplying the binomials together first. So I'll just bring down this 2x squared y, all right? Opening up a set of parentheses, and I'm going to get my arrows popping on these binomials. Yeah, they don't even, they don't even see me coming. So I got the arrows popping like a sniper. That's right, and he's sniping them. So I end up with x times x, which gives me x squared. I have x times negative y is negative xy. I have 2y times x, that gives me a positive 2xy. And then finally, I have 2y times negative y, that gives me a negative 2y squared. Ladies and gentlemen, that's right, we're on fire today. Fire. Then, let's go ahead and combine the middle terms inside the parentheses. Remember, if you write your answers, write your products in alphabetical order, it'll be easier to identify like terms. So since I wrote this term as xy, as well as the third term inside the parentheses as xy, it's easy for me to see that I can combine these two. Let's start off by bringing down this 2x squared y. All right, we are definitely not done just yet. So I'll bring down inside the parentheses the x squared. I'll combine these middle terms together, so a negative 1xy and a positive 2xy, that gives me a positive xy, all right, just like that. Then I'll be bringing down that negative 2y squared, and next I end up with a monomial, one term, times a trinomial, three terms, okay? So here's my arrows, and what are my arrows doing? That's right, they're popping, okay? Arrows are popping. So I'm going to multiply 2x squared y times everything inside of the parentheses here. So 2x squared y times x squared gives me 2x to the fourth power y. And then I'll have 2x squared y times xy. That's going to give me a positive 2x cubed y squared. And then multiplying the 2x squared y times a negative 2y squared, I end up with a negative 4x squared y cubed. And this is my answer here. All right. That's right. These two exponents are getting on my nerves too. So I'm going to fix them. All right. So this was x to the fourth power and this was a y squared. All right. And that looks better now. So let's go ahead and put a red box around that. That's right. Okay. And done and done, ladies and gentlemen. So thanks for watching Multiplying Polynomials, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring. As always, please rate, comment, and subscribe. And if you would like to get in on our intros and outros, please send us that video or audio file to fbt at tutormemath.net. Peace. We certainly hope you enjoyed today's presentation by Fort Bend Tutoring. Did you understand the program? Would you like to rate us or give us some feedback or subscribe to us? Leave a nice comment. Don't just leave something ignorant on there. If you didn't understand the lesson, ask the professor to explain it for you. Don't just get mad and write something ignorant on there.